never used face cream, don't do what she did. This is the horrifying story of a woman who never believed a jar of face cream could change her life forever. Oiwa was a beautiful Japanese woman married to a rich and powerful man. Their marriage seemed perfect to others until one horrifying day. This is where Ome comes in. She was jealous of Oiwa's beauty and in love with her husband. So Ome began an evil plan. She made a poisonous face cream that caused Oiwa's eyes to droop and her hair to fall out. She then gifted it to Oiwa who began using it every day without a second thought, not even checking her own reflection. Now disgusted by her, her husband began an affair with Ome. But things only get worse from here. In ancient Japan, Oiwa's husband couldn't find a way to divorce her, so he ordered one of his friends to SA Oiwa so that she could be framed for being disloyal to him. But the friend couldn't go through with it, so out of mercy, he hands Oiwa a mirror and tells her the truth. Shocked by what the face cream did to her, she takes the sword and unalives herself. In her last breath, she curses her husband's name. Soon, her husband and Ome got married. But on their wedding night, the ghost of Oiwa appeared before them. No matter where they went, Oiwa would always follow them, staring at them with her ghostly eyes, haunting them forever. It's a creepy lost episode of Barney that a father swears he caught his kids watching. One day he was looking at the TV guide when he saw that it said a lost episode of Barney was going to air at 7 p.m. He asked his kids if they wanted to watch and they said yes. They all sat down to watch it and the theme song started playing but something wasn't right about it. It almost sounded like the song was being whispered. The episode started as it usually did, the kids holding the Barney doll that suddenly comes to life. But when Barney started talking, he sounded slightly weird. It sounded like two people were talking talking at once. His normal voice and one that sounded darker and scarier. And suddenly he said, Hi kids, today I'm gonna talk to you about death. So one of the kids asked him, Barney, what's death? He then chuckled and said, This is. With his face suddenly turning angry, his teeth growing long, and then he eats the child. And then he proceeds to chase all the other children around trying to eat them throughout the rest of the episode. And then at the very end of the episode, he sang the I love you song as if nothing happened, so strangest unsolved mysteries from each state. Today, we have Oklahoma. On April 9th, 1947, Oklahoma's deadliest tornado hit Woodward. The Croft family were very wealthy residents of Woodward. Mrs. Croft died in the tornado and Mr. Croft had to be rushed to an Oklahoma City hospital because of his life-threatening injuries. They had two daughters, Joan, who was four years old, and Jerry, who was eight years old. The two girls went to the hospital with their father and Joan had a very large splinter from the tornado, so she was sent to the basement for minor injuries. There, Joan and Jerry stayed the night. But the next day, two men entered the hospital wearing khaki military uniforms and asked for Joan Croft by name. They saw her, picked her up, and started carrying her away. Jerry, her older sister, started protesting and saying, you can't take my sister, but they told her they would be back for her. Two workers tried to stop the men, but then they were allowed to proceed once they said that they were family friends and they were taking Joan to see her family in a different hospital. And Joan Croft was never seen again. If Joan is still alive, she would be 77 now. Over the years, a few women have come forward saying that they think they might be Joan. The strangest unsolved mysteries from each state. Today, we have North Carolina. This story is called the Below Murders, and it took place in Windsor, North Carolina. Below was the name of the local grocery store, and on a warm June night in 1993, something very awful happened. A murderer hid in the store and waited until closing time. And once the crew started doing their nightly duties and cleaning and closing, he jumped out and held them at gunpoint. All of the employees were bound, gagged, and then brought to the meat cutting room. In there, he stacked their bodies and started firing the gun until he was out of bullets. He grabbed a knife and stabbed each and every victim. One of the injured employees actually managed to get to the phone and call the police before they died. When the police arrived, they were not prepared for what they were going to see, such as people lying in their own piles of blood and a man with a knife in his back. The police actually found this one man that they thought was dead because he was drenched in blood, but he was actually unharmed and still alive. The strangest part is nobody even knows who would have done this or what motive they had. The below shut down shortly after, and to this day, the police are still trying to find out who did this. John and I knew each other through one of our mutual friends. Well, 24-7, John would post sad quotes on his Snapchat story because him and his girlfriend had just broken up. So I decided that I was going to be Captain save -a and be there for him telling him it was okay and that everything happens for a reason. Well, eventually, John had developed a huge crush on me. Like, he would flirt with me 24-7, sending me all these cute emojis. So after talking for a little bit, him and I started dating. Well, the one day I was on Snapchat going through his story and he was posting a bunch of funny memes on his story and I was just laughing until I got to the last thing that he posted on his story it was this picture of a baby girl saying i can't wait to meet you from dada so with my crazy ass i jumped on the phone and started cussing him out and then he goes what are you talking about that's my little sister like for part two part two about how he cheated on his baby mama with me so like i said when i confronted him about it he said that it was a picture of his baby sister but he calls me the next day and he starts apologizing about everything. And then he decides to make a new Snapchat account and starts talking to me on there. 
thinking that I was just going to block his other account, he posts a picture of his baby mama. So at this point, my Virgo self and I were done. By the way, he's a Gemini, so if that doesn't explain it, I don't know what will. So I start dating my new man, and I commented on all of his posts. I guess I'm not surprised she's not the only bitch you're fucking with. And if you try lying, I'm going to spill the tea. Like, I just think that it's really funny how females just think that their men are so loyal. Even when you literally expose their man with every piece of evidence. Well, the girl who sent this in has a special message for all of us. I promise you that men ain't shit. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. How to deal with acne in school. I know I may look like I have nice skin now, but one, the beauty filter's on. Two, I did not always look like this. Although I didn't have severe systemic acne, I was prone to breakouts and I wouldn't leave them alone. So of course I kept messing with them until I would have a huge cluster and they were beautiful on both sides of my face. So my first tip to you is no matter how tempting it is, leave it alone. One, it will heal better. It goes away faster. I know you think it doesn't. I know you think it's like so ugly to look at. I'm trying really hard and I really can't remember anybody's specific pimple you know what i'm saying especially if you were like me and you were just having breakouts every once in a while then don't think people will remember that because they really really won't another reason why my face probably looks like this now is because i never wore makeup in school it's just school you don't have to look great all the time we all have to show up if it hurts and you're dealing with it at school ice can really help a band-aid and those are just like quick fixes there's this thing called the mighty patch i think they sell it at target and on amazon you put it on over any pimples at night and it's supposed to help basically drain them. Also, if you're wondering what this is, this is not an ad, but this is Starface and this is what I use and I really, really like it because you'll see, you'll see TikTokers with the stars and I was wondering what that was, but they sell it at Target. It's kind of expensive, but like, look how cute it is. You can also get this if this is something you can be a little bit more confident in if you want to wear this during the day. If you want to prevent acne, which yes, why wouldn't you? I hate saying this, but drink water. I, I know, I know. Water is supposed to help improve your overall skin or ju your just health. I knew a kid who just never drank water. He was like, I don't drink water. <laughs> just try it. If you used to drink, like, I don't know, one water bottle a day, try increasing the amount of water you take in. Check on your skin after two weeks. If you don't see a difference, then I don't know. Ask for your money back. Look into gut health. A lot of the sweet or greasy foods that we eat can, you know, affect what our face looks like. I'm not going to tell you what foods to stay away from or what not to eat because I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a dermatologist. Do your own research and talk to your own professionals. But all of our bodies are different, so find what works for you. Good luck and follow for more. Story of the time I realized I was adopted. So my adoption was an open adoption, which means that my parents didn't keep it a secret from me. And I've always known my birth family, well on my mom's side. But even though I was given this information when I was young, it definitely didn't register with me. The first time I was confused about this, I was in first grade. We were making Mother's Day cards, and I remember being really confused because I know my birth mom, but I have my actual mom that I call mom at my house. Hold that thought, guys, I hit 2 million followers on TikTok and I teamed up with Model 1 so I could do a giveaway for you guys. I'm giving away a poly gel kit that has a bunch of goodies in it and also an entire acrylic system kit. I'll show everything that I'm giving away at the end of the video. Make sure you head over to my Instagram so that you could enter. Anyway, I raised my hand and I asked my teacher, do I give it to my birth mom or my real mom? And she was like, what are you talking about? And then I was just embarrassed, so I said, never mind. And then another time, my mom was like, your sister's birth was so easy. And I was like, really? How was mine? She was like, uh...